dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, it's 631. I'm Will Puckett. And I'm Cassidy Strickland. Hope your day is off to a great start. As you get ready to head out the door, things are looking pretty good. Yeah, things are looking pretty good, feeling even better. Mm -hmm. But this time tomorrow, we'll be singing yesterday, as Old Dominion says, because it's not going to be anything like we've seen the past two days. Let's bring Brandon in and he'll give us a rundown of what we should expect today and going into tomorrow. The times they are a change in and tomorrow we're going to say what what a difference a day makes. But this morning, still pretty, pretty mild, so enjoy it for while it lasts. We'll take a look at the camera network this morning as we head out the door here at 631. You see US 119 up on top of Whitesburg Pine Mountain. Traffic moving pretty well. A little bit of rain over there overnight. UVA wise, after a little bit of black frame there, we see uh, some clouds across parts of the region. Maybe just a touch of fog, but again, I don't think we're seeing a whole lot of this morning. I think it's just low hanging clouds there, but for the most part, a dry start to the day. Light pin point Doppler radar. No rain for now, but a couple of scattered showers possible as we head through the morning. Temperatures from 52 in Wise to 58 in Prestonsburg. A lot of 55s to about 58s there across the region. A lot of 56s and 57s as well. Taking a look at the big picture across the state. 57 Paducah. It was a 57 there in Pikeville early, so from Pikeville to Paducah. Bowling Green, you're also 57. Louisville at 58, Huntington at 59. They were at 60 just a few minutes ago. 60 is our forecast for today. It's going to be a breezy day. Some scattered chances for early and some clouds early and then some sunshine building in late. Should be a fairly nice day. Enjoy it because changes are coming, as we've mentioned, and I'll talk more about them coming up here in just a few minutes. All righty, sounds good. Thank you, Brandon. Well, in political news this morning, the partial government shutdown is now in its 18th day, making it the second longest in history. Now, President Trump has been demanding a border wall throughout the entire shutdown, and tonight he will give his most formal argument today. CBS's Mark Liverman is in New York with the details. President Trump will give his first primetime Oval Office address tonight. He'll argue his case to the American people for a wall at the U.S.-Mexico border. We have a, an absolute crisis and of criminals and gang members coming through. It is national security. It's a national emergency. It's an issue Mr. Trump has been making since the day he announced he was running for president in 2015. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. And some... I assume are good people. President Trump remains deadlocked with congressional Democrats over his demand for $5 billion for border wall funding. He'll visit the border on Thursday. There is no security crisis at the border. Democrats will offer a rebuttal immediately after his speech. I expect the president to lie to the American people. Why do I expect this? Because he has been lying to the American people. Trying to lessen the impact of the shutdown, the Trump administration announced the IRS will process tax returns and provide refunds to taxpayers. Mark Mazur of the Tax Policy Center says that will be a relief to thousands of Americans. People often rely on their tax refunds to either pay bills that they may have piled up during the holiday season or to make a purchase of a consumer durable or even things like rent and food and so on. The IRS will have to recall furloughed workers, meaning they'll be working without pay. Mark Liverman, CBS News. Now, White House Acting Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney says if an agreement is not reached by midnight tonight, about 800,000 federal workers will miss this week's paycheck. It has caused concern that employees, especially TSA agents, will start calling out sick at even higher rates. Now, the shutdown has prompted the Justice Department to ask a federal judge in an Obamacare case for an extension of a filing deadline. But officials say the filing is unlikely to substantially delay the case. House Democrats moved to intervene in an ongoing lawsuit to defend Ob Obamacare last week. A coalition of Democratic state attorney gen attorney g attorneys generals, there we go, is currently defending the law. The moves came after a federal district judge in Texas issued an opinion last month declaring the health care laws and individual mandate unconstitutional. The judge said that because of it, the rest of the law could not stand but will remain in effect pending appeal. 
Well, the U.S. Supreme Court met yesterday for its first day of oral arguments in the new year. But Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a key liberal justice on the court, was not there. 85-year-old Ginsburg is still recovering from surgery last month to remove two cancerous nodules from her lung. The court's public information officer says Ginsburg is still able to vote on the cases by reviewing the transcripts of oral arguments. Well, it's official. Former state auditor Adam Eadlin is on the list of candidates hoping to unseat Kentucky Governor Matt Bevin. Eadlin made his campaign announcement yesterday in Lexington. Eadlin says he wants to build a modern Kentucky alongside running mate Gil Holland. He is known for updating a part of downtown Louisville known as New Lou. Yesterday's names, the tired voices of the past, and talking point politicians are inadequate to this moment in our history. We need leaders who are prepared to meet this occasion. Well, Edlin joins a crowded field of Democrats, Attorney General Andy Bashir, House Minority Leader Rocky Adkins, and Jeff Young of Lexington are also running on the Democratic side. Well, former State Senator Ray Jones's seat is empty, but now Governor Matt Bevin has set a March 5th special election to fill it. Now, you will remember Jones stepped down from the position after winning the Pike County Judge Executive's race. Republicans and Democrats must nominate a candidate by January 15th. Write-in candidates must file by February 5th at 4 p.m. Elsewhere in Frankfurt, the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources has a new commissioner. Rich Storm of Carlisle, Kentucky is replacing Frank Jimley of Louisville. Jimley served as the commissioner since March of last year. Storm joined the Fish and Wildlife Commission more than two years ago as the 8th District Representative. In September of 2018, Storm was elected to serve as the chairman of the nine-member commission. In his annual speech to Vatican officials, Pope Francis called the church's sex abuse crisis one of the plagues of our time, saying the abuse was, quote, one of the vilest and most heinous crimes conceivable. The promise to shed light on the facts at a global meeting with bishops next month. Well, now to Texas, where there are some new developments in the drive-by shooting death of seven-year-old Jasmine Barnes. Yesterday, a judge in Houston ordered one suspect charged in the girl's killing held without bail. Eric Black Jr. appeared in court facing capital murder in the shooting death of seven-year-old Barnes. The prosecutor said the 20-year-old was involved but was not the gunman. The intended targets were likely someone else, uh, but instead they fired upon a LaPortia Jasmine and her siblings. A second person currently in jail on drug charges is also a suspect in the shooting, according to authorities. Now, Cassidy, the family of Jasmine Barnes is preparing for her funeral on Tuesday. Former NBA star Shaquille O'Neal is helping to pay for the funeral services. The four-time NBA champion presented a cashier's check to Jasmine's family last week. Well, 638 still to go on Mountain News this morning. Firefighters in Perry County worked to contain a forest fire that blazed near several homes yesterday. We'll be in the 60s today, so enjoy it because it'll be a thing of the past by tomorrow. I'll track out the cold in about three minutes.